Hello, I'm Ryan Rice from Washington State University, and in this video, I'm going to cover the post lab for the Chemistry 105 molar mass of a known acid experiment. So the first post lab question asks you to perform the calculations necessary to determine the concentration of the sodium hydroxide solution. To do this, we're actually going to perform a series of four semi-separate calculations. We're going to determine the concentration of the oxalic acid solution you made, We'll then take that information and use it to calculate how many moles of oxalic acid you used in your titration. From there, we'll get the moles of sodium hydroxide you added to the titration. And finally, use that to calculate the concentration of the sodium hydroxide solution. For the first of these four calculations, we're going to take the grams of oxalic acid you used, use oxalic acid's molar mass to convert those grams into moles, then divide the moles by the solution's volume to get the solution's concentration of moles per liter. If, for example, you used 62.37 grams of oxalic acid, in order to get these number of grams into moles, we multiply by the inverse of oxalic acid's molar mass. That will be 126.07 grams per mole. Grams cancel, and that leaves us with 0 0.4947 moles of oxalic acid. And then to calculate the solution's concentration, you take this number of moles and divide it by your solution's volume. So if you used a 200 mil volumetric flask to make your solution, that's where we get our volume. 200 mils, of course, converts into 0 0.200 zero liter. Take the moles of oxalic acid we just calculated, 0 0.4947 mole, mole over liter, and that is 2.474 moles per liter oxalic acid. So now that we have the concentration of the oxalic acid solution, which we derived from the weigh bottle mass data and the volume of your volumetric flask, our next step is to determine how many moles of oxalic acid we used in the titration. To figure this out, you use the volume of oxalic acid you used in your titration, which is equal to that of your volumetric pipette, and use the oxalic acid solution's concentration to get moles. So if your volumetric pipette's volume was 15 milliliters, we Convert that to liters. In this case, 15 milliliters is 0 0.015 zero zero liters times the concentration of the oxalic acid solution, moles per liter. And if you'll recall, it's 2.474 moles per liter. Liters cancel. And we have 0 0.03711 moles oxalic acid. The third calculation we're going to perform is to determine how many moles of sodium hydroxide reacted with the moles of oxalic acid we just calculated in the previous part. So if you look at the balanced chemical equation by which oxalic acid reacts with sodium hydroxide, you can see that they react in a two to one ratio, sodium hydroxide to oxalic acid. Therefore, if we want to convert, if you will, the number of moles of oxalic acid, which if you recall was 0 0.0371 moles oxalic acid, we use the reaction stoichiometry, which is 2 sodium hydroxide to 1 oxalic acid, o 
oxalic acids cancel. And this gives us 0 0.07422 moles of sodium hydroxide. So then, if we take this number of moles of sodium hydroxide and divide them by the volume of the solution that they came from, which comes from your burette data, we can get the concentration of the sodium hydroxide solution. If, for example, you used 13.41 milliliters of your, in your titration, we would take the number of moles sodium hydroxide, to divide that by the volume, 13.41 milliliters converts to 0 0.01341 liters. Moles divided by liters gives us concentration of 5.535 moles per liter. And this is the concentration of the sodium hydroxide solution. Of the calculations we've performed so far, you'll do this last one three times using burette data from your three trials in turn to calculate three different sodium hydroxide solution concentrations. Then in post lab question two, you'll average your three sodium hydroxide concentrations into a single figure and use that single figure in your next series of calculations. So the third post-lab question is going to ask you to perform the calculations needed to determine the molar mass of your known acid. Our approach to doing this will be nearly the reverse of the series of calculations we use to determine the concentration of the sodium hydroxide solution. We're going to determine the number of moles of known acid that were titrated, use that information to calculate the concentration of the known acid solution, calculate the total number of moles that were in that solution, and finally use that to determine the known acid's molar mass. The first step in determining how many moles of known acid were titrated is to calculate the moles of sodium hydroxide that were used in the titration. To do this, you take the average concentration of sodium hydroxide that you calculated in the previous group of calculations and multiply by liters to leave moles. So if the average sodium hydroxide concentration that you're working with is 5.535 moles per liter, and again this is the sodium hydroxide concentration, and if you used 11.13 milliliters of it, which of course comes from your burette data, you would then multiply the hydroxide concentration moles per liter by your burette volume in liters, 0 0.01113 liters, liters cancel, and what that gives you is the number of moles of sodium hydroxide, in this case being 0 0.06120. moles of sodium hydroxide. We can then use the reaction stoichiometry between the sodium hydroxide and the known acid to calculate the number of moles of acid. If our known acid reacted in a 1 to 2 ratio, and be careful here because this is just an example, the one you actually used in lab could be different, the calculation would be 0. 0.06160 moles NaOH times the reaction stoichiometry. In this example, one acid, which I'm going to abbreviate as A, over two NaOH. will tell us the moles of known acid that were titrated, which in this example is 0 0.03080 moles acid.
The next step is to determine the concentration of the known acid solution. So if we titrated 15 milliliters of the solution, which again this volume comes from the size of your volumetric pipette, then the concentration would be the number of moles of acid we calculated in the previous part, which is 0.0. zero, point zero three zero eight zero moles of acid divided by the volume in liters which 15 milliliters is the same as 0 0.0150 liters moles divided by liters gives us a molarity of 2.053 for the acid solution. We then use the total volume of acid solution that we created to figure out how many total moles were present in it. So if you made a 200 milliliter solution, and again this volume comes from the size of your volumetric flask, we take the moles of acid two point zero five three moles per liter times the size of the volumetric flask in liters, which in this case is 0 0.2000 liters. That gives us the total number of moles that went into making this solution, which in this case is 0 0.4106 moles of known acid. Finally, we will take the grams of, a, of known acid we used to make the solution of it, again this comes from your weigh bottle mass data, and we'll take those grams to, and the number we just calculated a moment ago to calculate what we think the molar mass of the known acid is. So if you used 47.21 grams of known acid, This divided by the number of moles of acid, which we found out a moment ago was 0 0.4106 moles, grams per mole. That gives us a molar mass of 115.5 grams per mole. And you'll do this last calculation, the one before it, three times using data from your three good titrations in turn to generate three molar mass values. Post-lab calculations four and five will ask you to average the molar masses you just calculated, calculate their standard deviation, and then calculate the range that that standard deviation falls around the average. Now I'm not going to calculate how to do an average or a standard deviation right now, but for question number five, let's say that your average molar mass of the known acid, average, is 116.37 grams per mole. with a standard deviation of 0 .0 0 0.6485 grams per mole. .6485. In order to calculate the range, all you have to do is subtract one standard deviation from the average to get the low end of the range and then add one standard deviation to the average to get the high end of the range. In this case, our range would be subtracting 0.6485 grams per mole from 116.37, 116.37.
the range would be a low of 115.72 grams per mole. Then the high end of the range, adding standard deviation to average, one hundred seventeen point oh two grams per mole. The final question I wanted to cover is discussion number two, which is going to ask you to compare the actual molar mass of the known acid to the molar mass you calculated it to be. To do this, all you have to do is see whether or not the actual molar mass of the known acid fits inside the range we calculated previously. So if, for instance, your known acid was succinic acid, which has a molar mass of 118.09 grams per mole, if the actual molar mass of your acid is, is this value, what you can do is if you compare it to the range we calculated, you see that this value falls a little bit outside the, our range and therefore we can conclude that the actual molar mass of the acid is a little bit different from what we calculated it to be. Having said that, it is reasonably close. So that's it. That's the post-lab calculations for the Chemistry 105 molar mass of a known acid experiment. I hope this was helpful and thank you for watching.